Hey guys, my name is Gretchen and this is Cover Art, a series where I talk about video games while doing my makeup at the same time. If you're ever curious as to what I'm using, I will go ahead and leave all of that in the description below. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and get into today's game. So today I wanted to actually tell you guys about the next series of games in the Legend of Heroes games. Last week we talked about, or last time, I don't know when I uploaded. <laughs> Last time we talked about The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky 1 through 3, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the next two games in the series, commonly known as the Crossbell Arc. The games are titled Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure. Again, both games made by Falcom JRPGs. These ones were released in 2010 and 2011. I cannot get this thing open. Holy shit. Who Made it. Maybe I spoke too soon. You know what we're gonna call? We're gonna call this good enough. Cause you know what, around here, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> and it rarely is. Okay, so where was I before that drama? So they were not actually ever released in the US and technically they still have not been released in the US, these two games. For whatever reason, the popularity in Japan just didn't quite take hold on these two games. I honestly don't know why they're great. Because of that, they didn't feel the need to localize it. And if you watched the last video I talked about, Trails took years to get translated and localized because of all the dialogue. So it's not like, it's not exactly like these are easy either. It did, however, get a lot of traction and fandom in China. I really couldn't tell you why. It just did. Did well for itself over there, didn't it? All right, so our setting for this game is the city-state of Crossbell. Crossbell is nestled between two of the continent's largest powers. Uh, it's nestled between the Erebonian Empire and the Republic of Calvard. Both powers claim sovereignty over Crossbell and neither of them want to give up that connection because Crossbell is a huge trade center. It is very prosperous. It's very advanced as far as technology. Like you'll see more orbital cars because everything that's a technology has to have the word orbital in front of it. But a lot more people with cars or a lot of like wealthier people, a lot of merchants that merchants that come in and out through Crossbell. So neither side wants to give up that good, good tax money. So they're constantly fighting over Crossbell. And this puts the citizens in a really awful situation. Like they're constantly in the middle of these two world powers fighting over them. And it leads to a lot of political issues within the city, as you might imagine. So the city and its citizens are constantly in fear of potential uh, violent attacks and unease and unrest due to the political, the hostile political atmosphere that has been created because of Erebonia and Calvert. This game takes place three months after Trails in the Sky the Third. So again, same universe. We're not that far behind our previous protagonists. So in comes Lloyd Bannings. Lloyd is a rookie cop who's actually returning to Crossbell after having been gone for three years following the death of his older brother, Guy Bannings. Guy was a police officer who was serving in the line of duty and investigating a case um, when he met an untimely demise, kind of mysteriously. No one's quite sure what happened and no one ever caught the murderer. So upon Guy's death, Lloyd went to Calvert to live with his aunt and uncle, but after three years, he's returning to his home of Crossbell and is joining as a detective following in his big brother's footsteps. So Lloyd arrives back in Crossbell and he's assigned to an odd section of the police department. It's a brand new sector called the Special Support Section or the SSS for short. So Lloyd, along with his three teammates, Randy, Ellie, and Tio, uh, they work together in this group and they mostly work a lot of odd jobs and are kind of set overall to try and help improve the public image in Crossbell of the police. They are trying to do tasks that are similar to the Bracer Guild. As you recall, um, 
our previous protagonists were bracers. So their kind of aim is to do more for the citizens of Crossbell and to improve public image. Because right now in Crossbell, the police department is seen as useless and like lazy and they don't do anything right. So like they're not, they're not seen in a good light. The SSS starts off by handling a lot of small odd jobs, like I said, mostly helping the citizens, kind of like bracers. But as they gain some fame and as they accrue more successes, they're given more missions and investigations to go on that lead closer into the corrupt underbelly of Crossbell and its many issues due to political conflict. But you know, they are doing jobs, they're gaining the trust of the citizens and, you know, making a little name for themselves. So that's good. It's cute. So eventually they start investigating the underbelly of Crossbell and find that it is just rife with political corruption, different mafias trying to vie for power, gangs that are roaming the streets of Crossbell. Oh, and also there's a cult. Just throwing that out there. So, you know, the city's got some problems and they're like, how do we fix this? This is our hometown. We don't want it to go to shit, basically, which is perfectly understandable. But it's kind of hard to do when there's so many antagonists fighting against you in order to do that. People vying for power or money, whatever it may be. During the SSS's crime syndicate investigation, they discover a young girl who is actually mixed up in all of this and she is completely suffering from amnesia. Only remembers her name, but re despite that, is just the brightest, cheeriest little girl that you ever did saw. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, she's cute, is the point. So they find her involved in this crime syndicate mess. They rescue her out of a sticky situation, and they kind of temporarily adopt her as they try and figure out who she is, where she came from, help her try and find her her family if she has one, and just, you know, get her back to being okay because she's just this little girl. She doesn't remember where she is. Is happy like all of the time. Just like happy to be there, you know? In their attempt to investigate where she came from, they do find a much more nefarious plot than they ever had anticipated. And that's really all I'm gonna say about it because if I say any more than that, we're getting into some heavy spoilers. And I do think if you like JRPGs, then you should definitely play this game. It is so, so good. So Zero ends with the resolution of the cult arc is what I'll call it. Like I said, there is a cult and there's obviously issues because it's a cult. You can't have a not problematic cult. So Zero ends with that resolved. Kia is still living with them, but they have temporary guardianship over her and she's just happy as a claim to be with them, honestly. She loves them. They're like her new family because, you know, who, who was her previous family? Nobody knows. So that's where, where Zero ends. It's kind of like the mini arc is resolved and then we're going to get into Azure, which has like a much bigger, much bigger plot to it. Similarly to Sky first and second chapter, where first chapter had like a littler incident resolved and then second chapter had like a huge blowout incident that gets resolved. So Azure picks up a few months after the resolution of that call and they're disbanding. It leads into Azure without too much of a cliffhanger, honestly, which I thought was quite nice because the other games are not that nice. So in Azure, we've got two new members to the support squad. Their popularity has gone up. They're seen as like an important part of the police station and the just general well-being of Crossbell. And you know, they're, they're doing good. They're doing pretty good. A lot better than when they started, obviously. So we have two new members and they're both characters from Zero that we know. They're just now playable characters in your party, which is kind of fun. Azure follows the special support squad as they deal with trouble in Crossbell, including but not limited to Crossbell hosting an intergovernmental forum um, with all of the world's leaders, Crossbell's forum being attacked by terrorists, Crossbell being used for yet another Ouroboros plot. Who could have seen that coming? And on top of all of that, Crossbell is eventually engulfed in a nationalist fervor that leads to it declaring independence and the Erebonian Empire and Calvert Republic both oppose that completely. They do not accept it as a sovereign state. They don't want to let go of control of Crossbell and they say no, of course not. But Crossbell says, 
we're sick of your shit. We're sick of being in between you two. We're sick of you treating us like this and causing all this political strife. So you know what? We're an independent state now. Sorry. So naturally that does lead to some trouble and a lot of work consequently for the special support section. Good thing they got new members. Am I right? Yeah, it's a lot. They got a lot going on in Azure. It's a lot more political, a lot more political intrigue and just overall trying to be its own entity, trying to gain independence from these huge world powers that have been abusing them and fighting over them for a really long time, like probably decades, honestly, maybe longer. The Ouroboros plot that I mentioned before really becomes the main focus of the game, despite all of this nationalist fervor that I'm talking about, because they're kind of feeding into it for their own goals, whatever those goals might be. And again, I'm not going to go too much further into that, because I don't want to get into too much spoiler territory, but that's kind of where we're at in this game. It's really interesting. There's a lot of fantastical stuff about it that happens. A lot of like crazy wow JRPG magic stuff that happens. It's really great. Really, really good. So like most RPGs, both of these games start small but build to a much larger plot like I mentioned before. Very similarly to Sky first and second chapter, they have these little plots that they resolve that feed into larger plots that are much harder to resolve and there's a lot going on, but the games do a really good job of really covering all of its bases and trying to avoid any plot holes or gaps once you start collecting the truth behind all the different issues that are occurring. What was different in this game than the first series in Sky, um, in Azure and in Zero, you're actually able to build relationships specifically with your teammates. And the more you interact with them, the more you link with them in battle, the more likely you are to have special cutscenes with them. And really, you can only do that with one character. You can only have like a like a, a BFF or a love interest in one character. I just thought it was fun that they introduced that kind of companionship or friendship mechanic where you get a special scene if you are close enough to another character. Because the main character is Lloyd. You do mainly follow his perspective on things. Although you can play as the other characters, they have their own viewpoint. Lloyd is really the the backing, the backbone, kind of like Estelle was in the sky. So you'll get specific endings for characters depending on if you bonded with them or not. The combat and the orbital arts system is pretty similar. I would say you have characters using new weapons and every character has their own weapons. So Tio, for instance, has an orbital rod. I can't remember what it's called, but she's mostly a caster. Um, Ellie has guns, Randy has his big ass sword, and Lloyd has, of course, Tonfa's, like his brother Guy did. I will say that the orbital arts and combat system is improved from the Sky games. It is definitely better. They only tweaked it a little bit and as they needed to, to kind of make it a more cohesive system. Zero and Azure do also introduce a lot of little cameos from previous characters that we know and love in the Sky games which I think is just a little joy. It's just so fun to see, you know, your previous children. Like, oh, my previous babies, look at them now. Oh, my new babies and my old babies are gonna meet up with each other. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds so weird, but I always refer to them as like, oh, my little babies, my little support section babies, or my little bracer babies, like my little kids, all grown up, look at them go. And these games have a way of really having you become emotionally invested in these characters. So seeing the cameos from like people from Sky coming into where you are now, it's just, like I said, it's just a little joy. Just love it. Honestly, when I started playing Zero, I was worried that I wouldn't become as emotionally attached to the SSS as I had with Estelle and Joshua and their group of people. Um, just because like I did love them so much and going to an entirely new setting with new characters, I was worried like, oh, what if I don't like them as much? I miss Estelle and Joshua. Where are they? I want to play as them. That was kind of my main concern, right? Because I loved them so much. But I immediately fell in love with the new characters. There's not really much else I can say about it. They are great. That's really it. Falcom has a really, really good way of developing characters, getting you attached to them, following their development. I don't know. 
they're just really wholesome, lovable people. So luckily that concern was pretty much immediately, you know, removed for me. So I do want to briefly mention Trails of Cold Steel, which is the next series in The Legend of Heroes that I'm going to talk about. The only reason I'm mentioning it now while talking about Zero and Azure is because a lot of the events in Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 happen at the same time as Trails from Zero and Azure. A couple of things that coincide story-wise, but because the Crossbell arc was made first, I played those games first, and they used the same engine as Sky, so it was an easier transition. Some people play Cold Steel because it is much more available in America, like way more popular in America. I mean, Crossbell hasn't even come over yet, which is just an absolute tragedy. I don't understand why they haven't just ported it over yet, but we'll get into that in a second. But anyways, a lot of people are like, oh, should you play Cold Steel first? Should you play Crossbell first? No, 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 no. Play Crossbell first. It doesn't make any sense to me to not play Crossbell first. I'm very passionate about this, as you might be able to tell. So if you're gonna play these games, play the Crossbell games first. Tell me if you need help getting them on your computer, I will get them for you so you can play these games. Just tell me, I will help you. <laughs> I will show you the way. So being that they coincide, there is a lot of like crossover events and the games have a way of almost spoiling things for each other. But in my opinion, the spoilers in Crossbell that would lead into Cold Steel aren't as significant. I would really, really recommend playing Crossbow first. A lot of things in Cold Steel 1 and 2 are going to make a lot more sense because of that, I think. If you couldn't tell, this is one of my favorite JRPGs. Yes, I have played Final Fantasy games. There's nothing wrong with Final Fantasy games. I just love The Legend of Heroes. I don't know what to tell you. And it's it's like this little gem. Not many people that I know, at least, that play video games or JRPGs know about it. And it's truly a shame in my opinion. But like specifically within the Legend of Heroes catalog, a Crossbell arc is my favorite, hands down. Which is saying a lot because I really love the Sky arc. There's just a lot of good political drama. There's really good twists and turns and character developments and crazy reveals as to like masterminds behind the plots and all that. It's just so good. The story is so good. If you watch my videos, you know me. I'm in it for the story. I'm in it for that lore. That's what I want. And ooey. Legend of Heroes will do that for you. I think this look is looking cute from far away, but like anytime I get real up into my mirror, I'm like, oh, not sure about the foundation. But you know, no one's gonna be in my face, so I think it's okay. There is a lot more political discourse in these games that I've mentioned already. That doesn't mean it's boring. I know sometimes people are like, Oh, I don't really want to get into the politics of things or what have you, and I myself am kind of that way as well in video games, but this game does such a good job with it. And it's incredibly fascinating to see how these powers, these world leaders, are influencing and manipulating the city-state and its citizens, its innocent citizens and civilians, and what the SSS can do to help stop it. The Crossbow games are not ported to the US yet, so the only way that you can play them is through fan translations. There is a group of fans called Geofront that have dedicated themselves to translating the games and getting them to American and English speaking audiences. So bless Geofront, doing the Lord's work out there, honestly. They do such a good job. It's so much to translate and for a group of people who just really love the game so much to go out of their way and translate it, to share it with even more people, I think that speaks volumes to the quality and the just how good the game is itself. Like you've got an entire group just pushing to get it out there. So if anyone from Geofront ever watches this, thank you for your work. Thank you for your dedication. You're the real MVPs. But good news, Falcom, the game developers, have actually decided to work with Geofront to use the translations they've already done and get the games out to English speakers by 2022. So we're expecting to see the Crossbell games come to Steam in 2022, and I am so stoked. I'm going to replay them. I'm so excited, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to get all the achievements. I'm going to emotionally attach myself to all these fake characters again. It's going to be great. So astounded that uh, Falcom is actually going to say, you know, you guys did all this work. Let's collaborate 
instead of a lot of other developers who might have said, uh, actually, could you not? That's ours. Because I think a lot of other developers may have done that. Now, how well they're collaborating with Geofront, I really can't say. Really don't know. Uh, I hope that Falcom and NIS America are treating them fairly and giving them the proper compensation that they deserve for all the work that they've done on these games. I haven't investigated that thoroughly and I just don't know. I don't know if they are. They better be. You better be, Falcom. But regardless, Geofront and Falcom and NIS America are going to be working together to bring us those games in 2022. And like I said, I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked on it. I really cannot recommend the Legend of Heroes series enough to you guys. They're just so good. It is my sincere hope that these games, when they come out on Steam, have a lot of traction and are able to get a lot of support because they're just really good. And it's a shame that Falcom, for whatever reason, probably due to poor sales, didn't port it to America because we've got the Sky series, we've got the Cold Steel series, which I'll talk about next week or whenever I post another video. <laughs> You know, they, they're missing a huge chunk of story in the middle for American audiences, and it's just a real shame. That's all I can say about it. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking your time to just listen to me gush about these games. <laughs> so I think they're really good. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night or whatever comes next for you, and I will see you next time. Bye! で、空、幻。上位山賊性が働いています。当や総員と同じですね。そう。やっぱり。どうやらこの先は一筋縄ではいかないみたいね。ってことは、あの得体の知れない化け物どもが徘徊してるってことか。いやで、ぞっとしない
強制潜入捜査を開始する